We are here with a tool tip and it's all about how to choose pliers. And you get these questions all the time, I'm sure. Yes, I do. Yeah, so how do you instruct people to choose? Well, the question I get most of the time is, what size pliers do I need? And a lot of people think you choose your pliers by the size of your hands. But one of the things I tell people that say, oh, I have to have small pliers because my hands are small, is that even small hands have to do big jobs. Oh, that's a good so way to remember it. That's when you look for a plier that has a longer handle. And the benefit is it gives you more leverage. It doesn't hit you in the palm of the hand, so you can do a lot of work without um, hurting your hands. So especially if you're working with heavier gauges of wire, it's important yes. to have a longer handle. Oh, A longer handle, but also make sure the jaws can handle up to, say, 12 gauge. So you're working with 12 gauge. A pair like this here is rated for more like up to 18 gauge. So you also look at the gauge of the work you'll be doing. You okay. look at the size of your hand is one consideration. The type of work you're doing is another consideration. And then also make sure your pliers have, a qualities, have the qualities that will make them most useful for a jewelry maker. Many of the pliers that we get, are from um, the um, hardware. I mean, oh, I yeah. started out, I swiped the chain nose pliers, uh, well, not chain nose, needle nose, off my dad's workbench and wrapped them with electrical tape because I didn't know there were special pliers for and jewelry that, making. That was your way of making sure that they didn't mar. And if you'll check your pliers when you go to buy them, if they have a silky smooth edge right here, they're less likely to mar. So those are a few of the considerations about when you choose your standard types of pliers. Now, what type of job you're going to do is also important, whether you're doing traditional jewelry making or perhaps doing specialty jewelry making with a specialty type plier. All right. And so you design these different shapes to make repetitive motifs. Yes. So like the flower. That's right. You can make these without measuring and quick and easy. That's what these types of pliers enable you to do. Also just shaping bezels like the bezel on this bracelet here. I shaped it um, using some of the larger pliers like this. Uh, you use round edge pliers whether they're the specialty pliers or even the uh, more standard shapes of pliers. You use round jaws to make curves. You use sharper edges, especially like the one on this flat nose here, to make sharp bends. And then the squares here, or something like the triangles, they make sharper bends. So you always try to choose a jaw that will make the type of bend you want. Right. You have so many beautiful pieces of jewelry here. I'm sure we won't be able to talk about all of them, but these are examples of using your mandrel, these shaped mandrel pliers, right? That's right. And what I want to encourage people to do with their pliers is just sit down and have a good time with them. Get some wire that's not expensive and just start bending wire and learn all about your pliers and what you can do. And that's the best way to design something new, to come up with your own design, is just sit down and play with your pliers. And there are so many different things to make. There are. I love all of your wonderful examples. Thanks for this tool tip, Patty.